Good evening, and welcome to Sports Beat TV, a production of Oregon Sports Beat. We are an interview format uh, type organization, and tonight we're going to be interviewing a couple of players involved with the the what we call waiver W A V O R. It's the Washington versus Oregon um, All Star Basketball game coming up on April the second. We are at the Terrain Coffee Project in downtown Vancouver. We are getting ready for that game. Now that game is an all-star game. It'll be the top seniors from Washington against the top seniors from Washington, uh, both boys and girls. That game will be played at Liberty High School. The girls game will start at one o'clock. The boys game will start at three o'clock. And Oregon Sports Beat is going to be bringing you that game for the fourth consecutive year. We will cover that. If you want to watch that game, we'll live stream it. It's on OregonSportsBeat.com and I will be doing the play-by-play -play for both those games. We're going to see if we can round up some guests for you in between the two games. So join us for that. Right now, we're going to talk to some people that are, well, they're essentially involved in the waiver program. Now, this tournament has actually been going on for about 30 years. I think 1994 Pretty close. Pretty close, was yeah. the uh, first year. The um, It's been a Liberty High School now the last I think this is the last mm. four years. I've been this might be uh, longer, year. yeah, and maybe longer. And now. joining us tonight for our show, Clark Chen. He's one of the sponsors. He's going to talk a little bit about the uh, program, and um, also joining us, a legend in the Oregon high school basketball, a member of the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame, 41 years a coach, 699 victories, two state championships in uh, 19. 1969 with uh, 79, 79. 1979 with McMinnville and Charlie Sitton, right. and 1989 with uh, Beaverton, right. head coach Nick Robertson. And yeah. Coach, Thank thanks you. for joining us tonight. Hey. Clark, Thank thanks you. for joining us. Clark, let's talk for a few minutes about the waiver basketball tournament. Okay. Uh, well, like you mentioned, uh, um, Waver was formerly known as the North, North, Northwest Shootout. It was started in 1994. Nick was uh, the longtime athletic director and boys basketball coach at Beaverton. He started the game. Uh, that was also the same year that I started Shirts and Skins, my basketball apparel brand. And I got Nick's approval to come in and just set up a table for merchandise. And that was my first involvement uh, with the Northwest Shootout and been a proud supporter and sponsor ever since, and um, even to this day. Have you, have you made it to all of the games? I made it to most of the games, and a uh, few years I wasn't able to make it, but yeah, generally been uh, there. Now you and I talked a little bit, this, this game has moved to Liberty High School, and it's been there, and that is a great facility, has a, has a pretty good capacity for basketball, lots of parking. What's the uh, plans in the future for the Washington, Oregon game? Well, um, just more like ideas that have been kicking around, uh, trying to bring it closer to the city so that way it's more centrally loca located. And just a lot of logistics that we have to figure out. But, um, you know, we're hoping that we can uh, try to find somewhere that's a little bit closer. But Liberty's been a great venue. It's great, like I mentioned, it's um, great for parking and a great facility. It's also within uh, Les Schwab Invitational is held every year too. You're a sponsor. How does uh, how does the organization get to be a sponsor of the tournament? Uh, well, we're a uniform sponsor. So when Nike, I think initially was donating uniforms, and uh, we came in as a uniform sponsor and provided T-shirts for the players to wear. For us as a sponsor, it's a great way to uh, promote our uniforms, but also support really the. A unique event uh, in the Northwest uh, because we are an Oregon based company. You, I think you told me when we talked before, you went to Beaverton. I did. Did you play basketball? I didn't. Didn't? No. You didn't get a chance to play for Coach Robertson? I didn't get a chance, but I, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of great, you know, great things about Nick, but one of the things that he was really tough and uh, but um, maybe looking back, I probably wish I would have. People who might want to stop by and say hi to you at the tournament, how will they find you? Uh, I'll be probably just roaming around, you know, around the, the sidelines and uh, just uh, just be involved wherever I need to be. All right. Uh, Coach Robertson, uh, first, you're a legend. And, uh, yeah, well, I think I've interviewed you in the legend. past. Yeah. <laughs> Tell 
tell us a little bit, what are you doing nowadays, Coach? Well, I've been, you know, it's amazing. I've been retired. I haven't had a team in, uh, I believe it's 17, 18 years. So um, I work uh, with the Les Schwab tournament. It's one of my things I do. Well, a little pick, bit more than his. work with him. Yeah. You're a co-founder. Yeah. Right, co-founder of that. Uh, this was uh, Northwest Shootout was uh, put together by three of us at the Mac Club one day. Who, and, who else uh, helped you with that? <clears throat> that was uh, John Herman and Mike Allen, and then Scott Kress lately has been in it. We so, all know the success of the Les Schwab Classic. Yeah. So that's how this, this got started with uh, just three of us. And they asked me, you know, uh, what would you like to do? And I said, well, we'd love to have an all-star game like they do, Indiana versus Kentucky or whatever. So 1994, we put it together. And you know, the best story in 94 was uh, we were playing the Washington team and they're all, they got a coach that's, He's all high and mighty and everything. I got a picnic picture of this right. And it came down the last shot, and a kid named Jamie Snook from Lake Ridge. Kidding me, you went to Portland State. Yeah, hit off the edge of the backboard and went in. We went. I'm going, oh, well, it's the greatest series ever. So, you know, that was a lot of fun. And we've had a lot of great kids uh, over the years, that's for sure. I forgot to mention, you actually were inducted into the Oregon uh, Hall of Fame mm -hmm. in 2010. Correct? That's correct. So you started this tournament in 1994. Right. Where did you guys uh, where did you guys play in the beginning? Well, we've been almost everywhere, it seems like. You know, we were at, at the University of Portland for a while. Uh, we've been to Lewis and Clark. We've been to a lot of different spots. The first year, Barry Adams and myself, well, that's a different note. I shouldn't go that way. But the first year of the Northwest shootout, uh, I think we were at University of Portland, and we, we were there for quite a long time until kind of figured out the, the NCAA didn't approve of us being there, okay? That reminds me, you're playing a post-regular season basketball game. Uh, where, how does that fit in with NCAA regulations? What are you allowed to do and not allowed to do? Well, the, the problem you have is that you have a senior is playing and he's now on your campus so it's a, it's like an unofficial visit that he's there playing it gives they think it's given that school an advantage to recruit that boy or girl all right yeah. now another thing too is uh, I, I was looking at the rosters for the upcoming game and I see a lot of players sp uh, specifically on the Oregon boys team who are not committed yet so this has to be a showcase for them for Recruiters, I've looked before, I've done the game a couple of years, and I looked in the stands, and I recognized mm -hmm. people that were sitting in the stands, recruiters. So this is a huge opportunity for seniors, boys and girls from both states. Oh, you bet. It's, you know, an Oregon team, uh, uh, we haven't had a whole bunch of D1 guys lately, and this year is, is no exception, but they're really good players. And you're talking about good D2 or D3 players, and you're right, it is a showcase. It's what they can do, and it's a, you know, it's a tempo game. Nobody's going to hold the ball. That's for sure. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about the rules of the game. Okay. Um, there'll be a shot clock. Right. And I believe the shot clock is 35 seconds. 30. 30 seconds. Yeah. The uh, Oregon players are not familiar with the shot clock because right. that rule doesn't take into effect until the start of next year. Right. Does that put them at any kind of disadvantage? No, I think the coaches always have to go out and say, okay. We have to prepare. You know, what are we going to do when the clock hits 10 seconds? What are we going to do? You know, so I've, I told that to my coaches, and they go, hey, we're ready. You know, they're ready for it, so that, that's good. Yeah. How is the game broken down into time periods? Uh, two 20-minute halves. You know, um, yeah. I'd like to see that change. Even at the college level, I'd like to see them play quarters rather than 20-minute halves. Yeah. Well, I kind of disagree with you there because there, it means that in high school, even now with the shot clock, I, I would agree with you, you could do it. But before, people would hold the ball the last whole minute of the quarter. Mm -hmm. So you lose a minute there and a minute there and a minute there, and pretty soon you've lost three or four minutes in a game. But two 20-minute uh, halves is better for it, I think. I know girls in college play, uh, they play quarters. All right, let's talk for a second. Yeah. How are the... We're going to talk about how you pick people in this game. Okay. How do you pick the referees? How do you pick the coaches? And how do you pick the players? Okay, well, let's start with, first of all, referees. I just give to a person that used to be in the referee association, and he invites people. 
okay? And that's, that's how that works. And we bring one Washington uh, uh, referee in. Um, as far as coaches, that's my job. I pick, I pick the coaches for Oregon. And again, as I mentioned before, the coach in Oregon cannot be uh, an active coach. So it makes it much more difficult for us. And so now uh, I've had Larry Doty, who was at Linfield. He's done about six years or so. Mm -hmm. And then every year I have to scramble on the girls' side. And I, two of the uh, guys that coach out in, uh, in uh, West County are taking charge of the team. And in, in Washington, Al Aldridge and Bill Bacamas pick the coaches, whether it's... Al Aldridge is a legendary yeah. name oh, in yeah. basketball in yeah. Washington. Yeah. yeah, so those two guys take care of the coaches. So the difference, main difference is in Oregon, the coaches do the viewing. In Washington, Al and Bill pick the teams and uh, their coaches go. Okay, how do you pick the teams in Oregon? What, what's the factor that goes into picking the team? Well, a lot of viewing. I would say this, our, one of our girls' coaches this year watched 83 games. Wow. Okay, so that's, that's a bunch of them on the screen, but, and, and, he, and he loved it. He's out every night watching games, and even after he picked people, he, he kept watching games, because they want those girls to know who they are. So they watch, and they compare, and say, for example, in Oregon, there was 18 girls that are getting a Division I right, so that's tough. You gotta pick 10 out of that. So, and, and the boys, it's the same thing. You just got to keep watching, see how they fit. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about those players, the specific players. I know you, uh, you kind of have an interest in all of them. We'll talk a little bit about the Oregon boys, the Oregon girls, and a little bit about the Washington boys and girls. So we'll take a break, and we'll be back with Coach Robertson and Clark Chen. Welcome back to Sports Beat TV, a production of Oregon Sports Beat. We are here with Nick Robertson, the coach, and Clark Chen from uh, Shirts and Skins Company. And we are getting ready for waiver. That's W-A-V-O-R. It means Washington versus Oregon. The high school all-star basketball tournament, not tournament, all-star game, coming up April the 2nd. It's at 1 o'clock for the girls' game, 3 o'clock for the boys' game at Liberty High School. We'll bring you that on Oregon Sports Beat. You can go to OregonSportsBeat.com and uh, uh, we'll, we'll be doing those, both those games and hopefully we can talk to some players and coaches during those games. Nick, before we get started talking about the roster a little bit, I know that the, the tournament makes some contributions and uh, who does the tournament benefit? Well, we've, we changed gears a little bit with Sport Oregon. We're now uh, uh, a large portion of our, of our proceeds go to the Maurice Lucas Foundation. And uh, David Lucas runs this, and it, it's, uh, it's like an after-school thing where they take kids, and they a little bit like Friends of Children. So they take a kid all the way through from grade 1 through 12, and they work with kids every day. So money's going to a very good organization there. So, Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Clark, I know you're, you're affi affiliated with Sport Oregon, and tell me a little bit about how you work with them. Uh, it started actually about four or five years ago where uh, Nick asked me to uh, uh, come into a meeting uh, with the Sport Oregon because they were taking over more of the day-to-day uh, the -day or uh, the game operations. And at that point, uh, I was still more as a sponsor, uh, but then in, in, in discussion is how do you try to make a, a more of a player experience so I did more like their programming, which means um, what do the kids want to uh, do when they're in town. So I took uh, that, I think in 2019, I took them over to uh, Chinatown in Portland and took them to like Pencil, which is the first sneaker design uh, school in, of its kind. I took them to Deadstock Coffee, which is a sneaker uh, theme coffee shop. And the players really uh, loved it. It was just something that hopefully that they can talk about afterwards of their experience and maybe that will uh, inspire the future generation of uh, uh, high school players. I know you also provide a, uh, a banquet for the players. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the banquet, uh, for example, every year Nick started this where it was uh, at the MAC, it was a first class event. It was uh, people, uh, the kids uh, got dressed up and um, basically went over their, uh, all their accomplishments. Uh, Last year, we made it more casual just because it was a limited space. We were just coming off of really COVID. 
and it was actually at my coffee shop in, uh, in Portland. And that was just more about the players and the coaches. Okay, and where's the banquet at this year? Uh, at the Bidwell Hotel in downtown Portland. All right, looking forward to that, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. A great experience meeting all those players in an informal setting. For sure, yeah. I mean, it's, um, you know, you would see them at uh, the banquet and the experience, and then um, and you start seeing their personalities come out. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty now. Let's talk yeah. about those players. You, uh, you, of course, you follow the programs pretty uh, carefully, even though you're not in the coaching business anymore. Right. Let's talk about the rosters of those teams. Let's start with the, with the Oregon boys team. I mentioned earlier, yeah. I think only one of those boys is actually committed to, and if, I think it's the tall kid from Redmond who's actually yeah. committed to a school, and I think he's going to Oregon Tech, but great opportunity for the Oregon boys. Tell us a little bit well, about some of the players. Yeah, really, it's, this is a, a, a nice group as far as talent, and I really think they're all gonna find a home. Uh, when you talk about two great kids, you go to Lincoln High School and the Roberts brothers, Malachi and Moroni, one's, I believe, 6'9", one's 6'6". They're, they're a, a real pleasure to watch. And of course, their their coaches, their mother, which is really fun. You know, an interesting and, thing yeah, about those, yeah, yeah. Malachi is the taller of the two. He's actually 6'8", Moroni 6'6". Yeah. Malachi plays point guard yeah. and Moroni plays underneath. He's a yeah. really... He's as tough a kid as I've seen. Well, you know, one thing that Lincoln High had, we're moving away from that a little bit, but they had another 6'10 kid on the block down below. Evan Heisler. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I can bury. Graham I can bury. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So those two kids will be a lot of fun to watch. Um, we've got Josiah Lake from the state champions. Uh, he's really a prospect. He will find a home, believe me. He can really play. Very talented guard. Uh, the Otten kid from Redmond. Is, he's a 6'10", a yeah. legitimate post yeah. player. Yeah, and they say he's the real thing. You know, we don't see Redmond down here very often. Uh, Jalen Chow is a very uh, uh, talented kid from Beaver Run High School. Uh, got a lot of talent. Kevin Bradford is a real uh, man. I as saw a, him as play. A guard. He's, he's a big 6'3", 6'4", guard out of Benson. Nice player. You know, uh, I did the Benson Lincoln game. That came the game came down to the last three seconds. All right. Benson yeah. was ahead by one, and uh, Malachi Seely Roberts went to the line, hit two free throws yeah. to win it. But those yeah. two put on a real performance. Yeah, yeah. Benson, Benson's coming on. They really are Great coming coaches. back. Coming back, you bet. Yeah. Um, Elijah Pippa White. I've known him since he was uh, about that high, and uh, he's a real player from Gresham. He can yeah. really play. When you went to the state tournament, there were four teams from the Mount Hood Conference that were in the top ten in the state. Yeah. Pipple White led Gresham, and they were they were really good. Yeah, they're they're tough. Uh, then there the uh, two boys from Tigard High School, Malik and Colleen Brown, and they are athletes. You know, uh, their coach played for me, and I always say to them, "Well, what do you think of me?" He said, "Coach, they fill up the stat sheet. I mean, you're talking rebounds, assists, everything on it. You know." And then really a, a kid that uh, people haven't heard about is the, the kid from Cleveland High School, which is... Uh, Jackson Cooper. Yep. Nice, solid player. And really they had a player. really great team this yeah. year, too. Yeah, Cleveland did very well. The PIL has, has been a nice league. Now, you don't have one team dominating anymore. you got everybody's pretty good. Actually, so actually yeah, you have yeah. a number of teams that moved kind of up in the rankings. Right, there. right. You know, when I look at the roster for the Oregon boys, Otten is 6'10". Malachi Seely Roberts, 6'8", Moroni Seely Roberts, 6'6", six, six, and just about nobody else over 6'2". Yeah, well, we're, we're expecting to fly up and down the floor. I'm sure of that. Okay. So you might have a tough time with your head going back and forth. All right. And Coach, you know, Coach Doty, I've watched him the last couple of years. He kind of runs five substitutes, so he gives everybody right. a pretty much equal chance yeah, to with, play in the with game. With 20-minute halves, you go five and then five more. And you try to keep it equal. Then, you know, after the first half, in all All-Star games, you kind of go, okay, guys that had the best first are going to go in and play, and they're the guys will sub in. Yeah, so, yeah. What's the history of the boys' game? How did the two teams? Uh, we are up on them, I believe, by four or five games over, over all the years. And uh, uh, that's a little bit because uh, uh, I think our coaches have gotten really well organized and got after it really hard. 
uh, Washington, if you look at how many high schools they have, they might have another 150 more than we do, but we've done very well. Um, last year, they were very talented and beat us by 20 or so, but uh, I hope to see them turn that around. I mentioned in the boys' game, only one of the 10 boys had a, a scholarship offer. Right. He's committed. On the girls' side, nine of the 10 have committed to a to a school already, so right. it's kind of like yeah. the exact opposite. Yeah, it's interesting how girls in the state of Oregon, I, I was mentioning there was 18 girls with Division One rides. You know, when you take a look at Sophia Bell, and uh, I, I think she's going, all American. she's going to U of O, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, her dad played there, and uh, she's a real talent, you know. A uh, hunter girl, is it Donovan? Donovan Hunter well, from she, South Medford. Yeah, and she's a handful, apparently. She can really play. Laney Spears going to uh, University of Portland. You go right down the list, and and uh, what the OSU girl is Kennedy, uh, Kennedy Schuller, Schuller, Schuller from right. Barlow. Yep, she's going there. And then you've got uh, uh, Beaverton has two other players, Madison Narrow. I believe she's going to Santa Clara. She is going and, to Santa Clara. And uh, Zoe, uh, Zoe Border is going to uh, uh, Santa Barbara. Right, and so there's a few I left out there. The best player I saw in the state all year was Jazzy Davidson from uh, Clackamas. Clackamas won the state championship, but they wouldn't have done it without their guard, Ryan Mogul, and she's mm -hmm. going to be in the tournament. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. And then, then the, the young girls really something else, apparently, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, look for that's a, always been a good series. Uh, the girls' game has been a good series. Washington girls will be talented. They, uh, they are missing their, their great, their tall, big, tall girl, apparently. She's going to some all-star game somewhere else. So. There's a limit on how many all-star games you can play in, isn't there? Well, it used, it, at one time, it was unlimited, okay? And I coached Doc Rivers in the McDonald's game. And when I saw him, in, I, that was in uh, March, then I saw him in June, and he had played in 52 games. Wow. Okay? So he was out of Chicago. They then put in a rule, you can only play in three. Now. Now it's unlimited. It's unlimited as far as I know. It's not a three-deal rule. We used to get had on that a little bit because some of your kids couldn't play. Like a Kevin Love would go, wow, i got to play on these three, and so on. So, you know. Where do the girls stand in relation to the, the Washington, Washington girls? The Washington girls are up about five on our girls. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Do you have a, um, over the years, do you have a specific player that you've liked the best? Well, there's no question. And coach, the coach from, uh, uh, from Washington, Bill Backmus who organizes that, and he's been with me the whole time on this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the best game we've seen was Peyton Pritchard as a senior, and he went for 43. I remember the game. And I think nine assists and seven rebounds, and so we won that game. That was huge. So uh, before that, it was Adam Morrison. Uh, out from, of, uh, who went to yeah, Gonzaga. Yeah, and he was dominant in his game, whatever. I can't remember what year I've got that down, but it doesn't matter. But uh, Pritchard's performance was great. And I have to give you one thing, is that the reason he got to play a lot was one of our kids took off the night of the game before the game was gone. And so we had nine guys. So it worked out well for Pritchard. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll remind you that game, the waiver game, Washington versus Oregon, the girls' game is at 1 o'clock, the boys' game is at 3 o'clock. Those are at Liberty High School, if you can make it out there to see the game. It's pretty exciting. They have pretty good crowds. and. And it's a lot of fun because those teams are playing for their state. We'll bring you that game on Oregon Sports Beat. You can go to OregonSportsBeat.com and make the connection to that game. I'll be doing the play-by-play. -play. Working with me on the uh, the girls' game will be Kurt Goldsdorf, who coached. Oh, yeah. He won three state championships at Oregon City. Mm -hmm. On the boys' game, it'll be James Broadus, the coach at De La Salle North Catholic. Yeah. He's won a couple of state championships. Yeah too, so we look forward to that, and we'll try to bring you some guests. I want to thank our guests tonight, head coach Nick Robertson, Nick, we'll see you out there, and Clark Chen, we'll see you out there at the game. Thanks for joining us on Sports Beat TV, a production of Oregon Sports Beat. I want to thank our crew, and I want to thank the Terrain Coffee Project here in Vancouver for their hospitality. Good night.